Welcome back everyone and thank you so much for following along our journey. My name is Aaron and I live full time in a 2014 Airstream Interstate with my wife Chris. After spending the winter in the southwest and quarantining in an RV park in Arizona for two months, we set out on a 60 day boondocking journey back to Minnesota to visit friends and family. At this point in our adventure, we're just about halfway through and find ourselves near Moab, Utah. The goal is to find all free dispersed and BLM camping, along with only relying on power from our Battleborn lithium batteries charged by solar and our van's alternator. Today we pick back up at one of our favorite free spots so far, where it felt like it was just us and the tumbleweeds. Well, if you have never tried boondocking before, you have to give it a try. It is daunting at first, but once you get used to it, there's nothing better than finding a spot like this. We have no neighbors. We saw, we saw one RV maybe a mile from us. Otherwise, we are in the middle of nowhere, but 20 minutes from Moab. What the hell was that? It was a big twister. That was weird. That came out of nowhere. It's dead quiet out here. No wind at all. And all of a sudden, dirt started flying into the windows. All of our stuff blew. My sandals are 20 feet away from the van. I got like dirt and stuff flying in my eyeballs. Yeah, I closed the window quick because everything was just like coming right in. Wow. Look at that dirt that came in on the floor. Yeah, I got, I got that. That's disgusting. Well, that was cool. I don't know what that was, but that was, uh, that was interesting. The gusts out here. If that was like a real tornado. We've been having to weigh down our chairs with big rocks. Like I'll go look, try to sit down and I'm like, oh, there's rocks. I gotta move. Wow. Well, that was a little bit of an excitement. That was. Now we need to clean up. Yeah, that twister. I heard it off in the distance. It sounded like... It gets so dirty in here. That's why I... Ah, oh, I closed the door. How did that even happen? It, the wind opened it. That's why I ran up to... Oh, it opened the door? Yeah. I ran up to it because I, I saw the commotion and then it's like all up... I closed it. It's all up in your rice cakes. It actually opened the door? Look at it. It's right on the road now. Look how violent that thing is. Yeah, it opened the door. I could hear it. And then you could slowly see it. So then I just stood there waiting for it and it sure came. Man, that's just crazy. It just can't, he just can't stand top of the stuff. <laughs> it's like never ending dirt in here. <laughs> Mini tornadoes are coming. Look what it like, did. I feel like I'm at the burning man. Wow. So cool. Fun stuff, Utah. So we've been here for a week now. We got here on Monday, it's Friday, and we're uh, running low on provisions. We need to uh, reload our tanks and uh, we're gonna do a little social experiment, which we've done some in the past, Chris. And they have not turned out good. So far we've been burned twice, we're 0 for 2. 
but we're feeling like we're gonna try for a third time today and I think it's gonna be successful. Well, what was your first time? Um, so it was when we were living in the apartment and we knew that we were transitioning to van life. So we were selling all of our stuff like crazy on uh, Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. It's really fun and addicting to sell your stuff. <clears throat> So I was slanging stuff left and right. <laughs> and this one lady had arranged to purchase our TV. And, you know, I probably had like 30 deals going at the same time. So when you got a buyer lined up, you just want to keep things moving. We were priced to sell. We were selling. And she, she shows up and she was like 20 bucks short for the TV. Getting paid on Friday. Promised to pay me when she gets paid and I'm like, oh, yeah, no problem. And in the back of my head I'm like, yeah, sure. We'll see how this social experiment goes But we did it and of course she never paid me the $20 test of humanity test of humanity failed It was an honesty test to see if she would come back and pay like she said she was gonna and she did not No, nope. she so. took advantage of me <laughs> well, well. And uh, our second time was actually at an RV park in Wisconsin Dells. This was last summer. We've been full-time RVing for, I don't know, eight months at that time. And we were at an RV park. We were going to a wedding that night and we're in a van. So we got to take our stuff with us, our whole van. We had to drive our van to the wedding. And I left the power cord and the water hose attached to our site and the reason i did that was because uh it was raining and so they were kind of like wet, wet and muddy and we don't have any outside storage so i didn't feel like um you know lugging those in here plus we we're going to a wedding so we we're kind of dressed up and trying to stay clean and we were planning on coming back that and night to let the park know that we weren't checked out yet like we were still there yeah we planned on coming back that night but we actually um stayed overnight in the parking lot of the the venue which was awesome that's another great thing about having a van and we came back the following morning i'd say maybe mid-morning and our power cord was there but our hose was gone and this was kind of a busy weekend there at a, a park in wisconsin dells and so just we like had, weird it's we like the some, most kid-friendly park in the entire country yeah, there was no reason to like think that these were going to get stolen, but uh, we had some neighbors that I think were new. I went over and talked to them, and I said, hey, did you notice anybody like here because, you know, our hose is missing? And she's like, no, 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 nothing. And then like three hours later, she came back and said her brother-in-law took the hose. And, and we got it back. And they thought we abandoned it, so... That just goes to tell you that inside campsites is, is, is not any safer sometimes than out in BLM land. And the reason we're telling these stories is because we're gonna do a third experiment this morning because like I said, we have to go to town to empty our tanks and fill up on water. And we love this spot, we don't wanna lose it. Last Friday we were at Hurricane Ridge right outside of Zion National Park and it was beautiful. And we had to go to town to meet some friends and when we got back, our spot was gone, which we kind of figured it, it was. But this one we want to uh, kind of hold. So we're going to leave our rug and our chair and table. The weights we're not going to leave because we can't replace those right now. And those are like gold. Yeah, don't do any social experiments with anything that you really, really want to keep. Because obviously it's called an experiment for a reason. Like there's a good chance you might lose this stuff. It's a sacrifice to the test. So we're not gonna leave our dumbbells here because those are life right now. Nope, so we're gonna leave the rug, a chair, and a table, and we're gonna leave a note that says, dear friends, please do not take our spot or our stuff. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna head into Moab, and um, we don't know how long we're gonna be gone for. We might keep it short, or we might explore all day, who knows? Yeah, this is another thing though that we need a long-term solution for. So we're talking about, cause we lost our clam tent, which would work great here to like secure our site. So we're talking about just getting a little mini pop-up single person tent just for the sake of like securing your turf. Yeah, yeah, so we'll pop up a little tent and that way we'll hopefully secure our spot a little bit better. 
I used a fresh marker for our names. Well, if anybody steals off of that... Karma. Gonna have a hard time sleeping that night. Yeah. <laughs> this is exciting. Just a little bit of adventure in our day. We're losing it out here. Little nowhere. So, and even if like a, a ranger stops by or somebody, you know, it's gonna look a little weird to see a rug and a chair and a... Just leave your coffee mug with it. <laughs> and leave my coffee mug. We don't want uh, anybody to think that people are lost, like hiking or something like that. But it has been very, very uh, secluded here all week. And now all of a sudden on Thursday last night, we started seeing more and more people showing up. So um, we'll see what happens. It's Friday. It's always kind of busy. Yeah, we love this spot. It's like, it's just great. And there's really good cell service here too. Oh yeah, the Verizon is awesome because it's not populated. It's uh, great for running on these long gravel roads and a couple birds, a couple <laughs> deer we're seeing. And otherwise it's just peace and quiet, darkness, skies with, with uh, stars. And it's just, uh, it's beautiful out here. All right. Ready to hit the road? <laughs> it looks like it's set up as a practical joke. Yeah. I think it's gonna work just fine. It should. Why wouldn't it? People have seen our van out here. If they are locals, they've seen it uh, for the past week, so. Yeah. All right, the slow road into town. See you in a few days. <laughs> Moab, Utah in late May of 2020. We just passed a few hotels and uh, campgrounds and they're maybe like a quarter full. It looks like things are starting to open up and a little bit of activities going on. We're headed to uh, a Maverick gas station and these things are awesome. We've hit up half a dozen of these in Utah so far and they have free RV dump, free water, and you just can't beat that. No, you can't. And they're pretty friendly too. This is cute. Yeah, it's a cool little downtown area. Cute little coffee houses and diners. We like little downtown areas like this just to kind of walk around and it check out. Want to hang out. Check out the local establishments. RV dump, there's a sign over there. Cool. It's probably one of the busier maps we've <laughs> seen Does it look so open? Far. We'll do that first before gas since it's open. Busy. Oh yeah, that's what we like to see. Nice open dump station. Yeah, busy with a lot of side-by-sides, but... A ton of... I've never seen so many side-by-sides in a gas station. Yeah, pretty cool. This is Moab. This is what it's known for. Rock crawlers and jeeps and side-by-sides. So the potable waters at the gas stations. It's nice that they put a sign there too. A lot of places just don't even label it. So then you have no idea what it is. Most of them don't have a hose connected either. So this one must get a lot more traffic. Yeah. Sweet. We'll have to do a little black tank flush. Oh. <laughs> well, that was a little bit of a ordeal here. We had a little bit of a clog in the black tank. I don't think we were using enough water. So that uh, good thing we got a black flush on it. So we just kind of had to sit there and flush it three, four times. And it seems to be okay now, but uh, we've been boondocking straight for three weeks now. We learned our lesson. Well, it's a delicate balance between water conservation and water usage. So, but uh, we just filled up our water at their little potable water station here. This well, place is great. It is great. So we're gonna, we need a half tank of gas. So we'll give them a little bit of patronage and throw our garbage away. Yeah. 
and then we'll call that a wrap. <laughs> I, don't know. I, don't know. I was like, my head was over the toilet, like trying to like help break it up a little bit. It was good. It, it worked out. Memories. Now I'm just watching which pumps are gonna open. This place is jamming. Yeah, there is a ton of off-roaders here. They are hitting it up for Memorial Day weekend, which is which is next week. So this it's it's pretty busy. I could only imagine what it would normally be like. Yeah. Wow. But uh, good atmosphere. It's fun. Yeah, I like it. All right, let's fill it up. Insert adventure card. Oh yeah. I haven't had to enter our zip for a while. Do you still remember it? <laughs> yeah. Do you need to get by me? Yeah, can you just take this for me? Yeah. How was the city grocery store? It was okay. It was okay. Not your fave? Not my fave, but you know, you really can't complain because you and I, we we hear a lot about places that have like zero produce and yeah. zero nothing. So I always just try to be grateful that I have produce. You know, like I have a client in Alaska and he talks a lot about how things just aren't available up there. Oh, yeah, that would be horrible. And it really just makes me try to focus on what was I able to find. So here's a fun little thing. So we talk a lot about having very limited fridge space. And our anniversary is coming up next week, this week. So I'm trying to get like some fun stuff for our anniversary celebration. And I did find like some salamis and stuff that we can do a little charcuterie board. Mm. But what's nice about these is you don't have to refrigerate them until really? you open them. Oh yeah. So always trying to think as an RVer, like salami, keep them somewhere on the shelf and they're fine. So that's great. That's something I found. I did get a sh pork shoulder roast. So that's gonna be my next experiment in the thermal cooker. Fun. That's about it. Nothing fun, nothing crazy. I got, you know, some cheese and meats that we don't normally get for our anniversary, but that's about it. Yeah. And it looks like our stuff is still there. Humanity is saved for the day. For now. For now, till the next test. You know, there's just something nice about coming back to the same spot if, if you don't feel like finding a new spot <laughs> yeah <laughs> sounds like super obvious but we really do need to get a tent though a tent would look a lot better and you know then it looks like somebody's camping here as opposed to this looks like a weird this looks like a weird situation a weird scenario yeah like what is that like we kind of do look like weirdos yep so good though that's excellent this yeah. is a beautiful spot and it'll be nice to stay here for another close to a week or half a week or whatever we decide to do. Yes, I'm really excited. Good. I'm taking a stab number two at our thermal cooker with meat. I'm gonna do pork carnitas today and I'm just kind of whipping it together. So I had a um, four pound pork shoulder that I trimmed up, cut into some chunks and I'm gonna do a bunch of seasoning with onion, jalapeno and a ton of garlic. And I'm gonna use the bag method this time. I'm gonna also put in some vinegar, chicken stock, um, and put that all in the bag, tie it up, and then fill the surrounding with the water because I don't wanna dilute this delicious pork. So this is gonna be for dinner tonight. It's like 10 in the morning, I think, I don't really know. We're gonna get this going and then we're gonna go on with our day and then we're gonna have carnitas for dinner. So we'll see how this goes. This is my first stab at it and it's like not an official recipe or anything since I'm just experimenting, but I'm already excited. 6.51. <laughs> so this has been outside for I think almost eight hours and 
we'll see how it's super full we'll see how good it shreds up it smells good when I started making this this morning it made me hungry right away so I did the bag method which this is really like piping hot so I'm gonna transfer this and then after it cools a little bit I'm going to take the meat out and start shredding it. Everything that's in this bag is the original pork roast and its own juices and some chicken, chicken broth I put in there. So we're just gonna drip this in here and then I'm gonna transfer it over to shred it. But this bag made it so it didn't like poach and dilute down in the cooking water that you need for the thermal cooking. Okay, so my biggest concern is that it won't be tender. So we're gonna see if it's tender or not. And let's see how it is. Oh, it's pretty good. Eh. Just that piece fell off nice. kind of tough. Maybe it needed more time. Yeah. All right. So it didn't, turn, it didn't turn out as good as I wanted. So I'm probably going to cheat a little bit and use my shears to shred it up. And we're just going to break it up and it's still going to taste delicious. We started with four pounds of pork shoulder and I just shredded it all up. That's here. It shredded up really nice. It was a little tough to do with the forks, but once I got in there with my hands, it shredded up really easily. So before I start actually preparing dinner, I'm going to take some of this pork, put it in some Tupperwares and some of this juice that's in with it. And then I'm going to cook dinner with some of it, obviously, but then I'm going to have these for transformation meals the rest of the week and for tonight I plan on just making a little bit crispy in a skillet. I'm going to put some on a salad and I'm going to do some corn tortillas and we're going to make tacos with some goat cheese and then this dressing I really like it's cilantro avocado yogurt dressing and it's really flavorful at just a fraction of the calories so that's our plan for tonight and The carnitas turned out great and I put probably two thirds of it in the fridge for leftovers and I cupped out a third of it for tonight that I'm just getting nice and crispy in my skillet and we're going to do tacos with goat cheese and I'm going to have a salad and it smells so good in here and the best part is, uh, well it was set and forget it all day and I have lunch all week long and a really good dinner like this is a special dinner for us so we're gonna enjoy it are you ready to say goodbye to this spot I am we're ready to go yeah this has been an absolute great spot we've made it uh 10 days here this is the longest we've ever been this is our longest stint in a blm uh area 10 days it's been great we left once to refuel and reload and unload and all that good stuff yeah and it's been absolutely amazing so we're on day six of our second half of this um 10 day stint here so we're ready to go back into moab and yeah. explore a little bit but i wanted to talk about this particular spot it was absolutely amazing the sunsets were incredible phenomenal this is like a nine out of ten in our uh kind of pick yeah it had everything except for really close by hiking trails yes if it would have had that it would have been 10. yeah i think so for sure it uh but we but there's a lot of land out here to walk and run yeah just not hike it's it's wide open that's that's why i like it so much is because you can see for for miles when when you're in the middle of the woods it's it's a little different it can be a little more buggy it's a little more 
I mean, it's nice there too, but uh, I like the open spaces like this. Our neighbors were like a mile away if, if we had them throughout the week. Yeah, and throughout the week, people that drove by started to wave at us. Like people warmed up once they saw us settled here for a while. Yeah, and they did a few um, like horse riding trails and dirt bikes. excursions that come out here. Yeah. We met a really cool guy named Mel. So on one of our walks, we walked down towards the main road and this guy was sitting on the road in a camping chair with a horse trailer just sitting and it was really bizarre and so we started talking to him we thought he looked bizarre sitting out there and he thought we looked bizarre walking in the middle of nowhere so he offers a service that picks up bicyclists they're bicyclists right what kind of bikes were they no they were bikers bikers like that they were probably like dirt bikes so you can't ride the bikes through the city of Moab. So he picks them up, drives them through the city of Moab and drops them off at their hotel because they're not street legal. Yeah. So some type of dirt bike or enduro bike or something like so that. So that was really cool. And we sat and talked to him about some stuff. He told us that we really need to go to, what is it? Dead Horse Point? Dead Horse Point State Park. So that's on our tickle list if we might um, check that out. Not today, but someday. So yeah, pretty cool. And now I'm really excited to go explore the city, be a tourist for a day. The dirt devils that were out here were great. Dirt devils. The mini tornadoes that almost oh, blew yeah. us over and yeah. those were those were fun. Insane. We've never, that's something new to experience. Mm -hmm. You know, the antelope. Yeah, the, the antelope. The coyotes we heard last night. I like the hay grass too. Yeah, it's an interesting terrain out here. It's, it's almost like a prairie but still kind of mountainous and my, rocky my favorite feature are those mountains in the distance mm, i can't remember what he called them the salsa salsitas salsa mountains something <laughs> just don't call them let's not call them the rockies they're not again. the rockies <laughs> oh yeah that's how you learn right yep but this is a great little spot and we're gonna move on. We still have uh, a couple days left in this area if we wanna stay the full 14 uh, day BLM limit. And in two days, the national parks are opening. So that's kind of what we're trying to hold out for and go visit arches and canyon lands. Yes. That's the goal. Goodbye. Goodbye, favorite spot. <laughs>